Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna to make a cowboy knife out of these ball bearings. First thing we're gonna need is a piece of quarter inch flat bar. This is mild steel. This is an inch and a quarter wide. And this is gonna help us make a specifically designed can for what we're doing. What I'm gonna do with these bearings is make a symmetrical honeycomb style pattern. Very even, pretty cool. It's not possible to get this result simply by throwing everything into a can and smashing it together. Okay, we've got our two pieces of quarter inch thick mild steel stock, five inches long. The width doesn't matter so much. They could be quarter inch square stock if that's what you have, but having this mill edge or factory edge is important. Our veterinarian over here in West Texas, great cowboy style vet, great guy. He's been asking for a cowboy knife and that's something that's specifically used for castrating and it's got sort of a bobbed off uh, blade, sharp knife. That's what we're gonna make today. Okay, so we've got our two bars clamped on either side of our one and one quarter inch bar, which is a denominator of our quarter inch size. That means that I can line five bearings straight up no problem, no extra gaps. This is just a couple ways to keep this super simple and easy. Now, I know that welding up a whole deal here to make a custom can doesn't seem super simple and easy, but what we're doing here is putting the preparation on the front end, and it's gonna make a lot less work on the back end. All right guys, there it is. So we've got our quarter inch thick stock and this inside dimension is what matters. It does not matter what the rest of this out here looks like at all. So once we assemble everything, we can weld this up. But before we do that, whoops, we need to coat the inside of this with something that will keep the contents from welding to all this steel so we don't have to try to grind it all off, big pain in the neck. So we'll clean this off with acetone and then spray it with some white paint. Okay, our paint is dry. We can go ahead and start putting our bearings in here. We'll see how, how well our measurements worked here. Five across. Now in some cases, ball bearings will come with grease or some kind of rust preventive on them, and that needs, should be cleaned off, I suppose. These ones are clean and dry. They're not sitting quite down all the way. Okay, so you can see obviously that it's better to air on the side of a little bit of extra room, just a tiny bit of leeway as opposed to too tight. I, I got, This is just a little bit too tight here and I can't fit the bearings in perfectly. That's a bummer, but we're gonna press forward anyway and it'll still turn out fine. So this end down here is a little funky. You know what you call that? You call that a tang. All right, look at that all welded up, except for this little corner bit right here so that there's uh, some, for, some place for the expanding air to go. We're ready to throw this in the forge. There it is, got three good heats on it, squished it down, 
and hopefully I didn't go too thin there. We should have like a nice eighth inch thick or something, some, something like that, eighth inch thick piece of steel. Now to make a knife out of, so we're gonna let that cool down and we will start uh, tearing into it. All right, guys, there it is. This is a piece of steel that after just a little bit of basic flattening, we can literally just go make a knife out of. And so that's, uh, that's the purpose for all that preparation on the front end. We're not gonna do, I'm not gonna do any forging to this other than flattening it out. Well, I said I wasn't gonna forge on it, but then I did. So we're a little closer to our finished uh, profile dimensions. I just couldn't bring myself to grind all of that stuff away and just waste it, you know? So there it is. We'll let that cool down, then we can uh, roughen in the profile a little bit further, normalize it, and keep going. So this is our little pet sparrow, Chicory. Yeah, you're such a cute little bird. But it's time to let her go. I found her on the ground about a week ago, a week and a half. And she couldn't fly hardly at all. But she's flying really good now, so it's time to let her go be a, a wild sparrow again. But it's been fun to. Yeah, it's been fun, huh? You're a cute little bird. Alright guys, we have a normalizing cycle and a couple of thermo cycles on this, so it's good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, clean up the profile, throw a rough grind on there, and we can go ahead and heat treat this thing the rest of the way. All right, there we go, looking pretty sharp, and into the hardening we go. All right, there it is, all tempered up and ready to finish. But before we do that, it's time to praise the king for a minute. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I'll keep praising your name at the top of my lungs.
Well, now that we have the blade etched and all ready to put a handle on, we need some uh, cool handle skills that'll go well with this, I think. So let's uh, let's use these. All right, the epoxy should be quite set. Aha, let's shape this handle. Well, now it's time for the obligatory paper slicing test. So, there you go. I would say that that will slice some balls. Thanks for coming along on this forging adventure. If you like what you see on the channel here, consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.